Hey, what's going on guys? John here with another One Take Daily. Today is February 22nd, 2022. Lots of twos today. I don't know if this is one of those like 11-11 make a wish come true kind of day, but if it's special for you, I hope you have a very special day. I came up with a catchphrase for this series and, you know, hold on to your seatbelts. It ain't anything crazy um, and it's probably going to be a bit cringy for some of you guys, but uh, it goes like this. It goes, one take a day keeps the vibes in check. Uh, that's what I came up with. I'm pretty sure you guys can come up with something way better. So y'all let me know in the comments if you guys can come up with something better. But um, back to the whole 222, 2022, 2022, all this, all this two. Um, if there is a, if this is one of those 11-11 type situations where I can make a wish come true, I have plenty of personal wishes uh, as well as wishes for Manchester United. Of course, tomorrow Manchester United take on Atletico Madrid in a very, very crucial first of two legs against Atletico Madrid. First game being away at Madrid. Uh, it's a huge, important game for Manchester United's Champions League campaign. Of course, everybody knows that Manchester United's chances of winning the Premier League this season, at least, are pretty pretty much done and dusted. Um, so the only real, 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 real opportunity for Manchester United to win something is the Champions League. Albeit, winning the Champions League is not the easiest thing to do, right? But, hey, never say never, right? Manchester United... Uh, go take on Atletico Madrid. Diego Simeone's boys have always been a side to be uh, feared to some extent, to be respected, and, and to be taken seriously. Atletico Madrid, however, recently have come out with some news talking about how they're going to be missing Suarez, they might be missing Koke, their captain, and apparently training sessions um, suggest that he'll be lining them up in a back five, maybe potentially building them up for a, a more of a defensive counter-attacking system. I don't know what he's trying to cook up there, but... Manchester United fans have been a bit more um, expressive about the news coming out from our camp. Uh, Ralph Rangnick coming out today this morning talking about how Edison Cavani will still likely be unavailable because of the fact that uh, he is still suffering um, from a uh, groin injury. <sighs> this has divided up the fan base in, in some ways because Edison Cavani, as much as as much as he might not be available many times throughout the season, he has definitely uh, won the hearts of many Manchester United fans for his work rate, for his dedication, and of course, for his quality as a striker and as a forward. However, the news today seems to have really pushed that, bo uh, that boundary and that envelope a little bit where fans are now saying, hey, look, this guy's just going to be out whenever he wants. This guy's just going to be out for the, the smallest of situations. He just plays whenever he wants. We don't want something like that. We need to get him out next season. We need somebody better. Um, I find truth in that just a little bit. The truth aspect, the truth, the true bit about that statement is that we do need to find somebody better. We do need to find somebody, not necessarily better, but we do need to find a striker for the long term because we can't continue to rely on these these aging um, these aging strikers because you can clearly tell fitness and staying healthy are definitely one of the main major concerns for these players, and rightly so. You know, it's not, it's nothing it's nothing shocking. It's nothing uh, new. Right, it makes sense at their age. They need to be taking care of their bodies a little bit more. They are more prone and susceptible to more injuries and things of that nature. Edison Cavani, on the other hand, while he looks to be fit at times, it seems like for every reason or another, he seems to be wanting to take a day off or staying away from the game or not risking his body. I've said this many times again: the modern footballer, the modern athlete, does not have that kind of a, that loyalty that that fans might remember, especially back in the days. The new athlete now, more so than ever, is worried more so about their own personal campaign, their own personal career, their own personal issues, their own personal um, investments. So whether you think that's right or wrong, that's your opinion. Um, I understand and accept that that's just the modern player now. Nothing wrong with it in my, in my personal preference. There is a point where it gets wrong when you just clearly don't seem to care. Um, I don't think Edison Cavani is at that point where he doesn't care. But I do definitely think that he is definitely, definitely, definitely putting himself first. Which, like I said, I don't, I don't really necessarily think that's a wrong thing. However, however, Manchester United is probably, for me, at the reason, uh, at the forefront of putting themselves in this kind of situation. We signed a 36-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo. We signed um, a past his prime sort of Edison Cavani, who spent all of his peak years at PSG. Manchester United cannot continue to operate in this way. Manchester United cannot continue to pick up uh, um, players past their prime and giving them decent wages and letting them come and sort of feel like they're retiring. We did this with Bastian Schweinsteiger. I love Bastian Schweinsteiger, but it seemed clearly to be the case when he came. He was just flying back to Germany whenever he could. 
It, it, this seems to be the case for Manchester United for far too long, and we cannot allow this to happen. We need to either continue to trust in our youngsters and, and breed these players and, and find the right balance of youth and experience in the squad, or we need to really just go into the market and just dump money on players that we know are talented, like, for example, a Jaden Sancho type player. Talented, young, filled with pot potential. That's a great signing in my book. Somebody like Edison Cavani. Some people might even argue that Cristiano Ronaldo might not have been the greatest of signings. But my point is, is that we cannot continue to rely on these kinds of players and these kinds of profiles of players. Next season, in the summer, we need to sign a forward, especially if we're going to let Antti Martial leave, especially if we know 100% that Marcus Rashford is not a striker, especially if we know that Cristiano Ronaldo's future at Manchester United is going to be in doubt, especially if we don't make it into, into the top four and qualify for the Champions League next season. So many different factors just lead us to believe that Manchester United would be much, 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 much better off if we if we built the proper squad with a proper striker and a proper forward. Lots of lots of conversation today about how uh, Harry Kane is linked with uh, Manchester United in, in addition to Declan Rice. Do I want that that kind of player profile? Probably not, and not anymore at least because I just feel like uh, with uh, Eric Ten Hag coming. I'm not sure if he's going to like the player profile of Harry Kane. If Pochettino comes, maybe. I have no idea. My point is, is that I don't care who it is. If, it, if it's a, a proven talent and where we're going to dump absolute mad money, we just need to make sure that the, the, the manager, the, the incoming manager is okay with that. And we just also need to know that the, the team that's being built around X player is going to be built properly and fully invested in. Um, and if we're going to invest in a young player, then we also need to just understand the fact that this is going to be a, a potential type player. You know what I mean? If we can dump 250 mil on Air Erling Holland, that's great. Manchester United can cement their position in the world as one of their superpowers and say, look, we're, we mean business. That's great too. I don't know who we're going to sign. All I know is we need to sign a striker. I guess this is where I can end it and ask you guys, who do you think we should sign? Which striker do we need to sign? Because, yeah, obviously the main conversations right now surrounding Manchester United are... Um, are um, uh, the managers and uh, the manager position but the most important thing is that we sign uh the manager first and then the the striker that man the manager would like to see come to Manchester united anyways y'all let me know in the comments who do you think we should sign uh and that's it for today i'll see you in the next one